Are you having trouble starting new habits in order to be healthy? Do you just feel overwhelmed and you can't quite get started or you get started and it quickly dies off? Well, today I'm going to be talking with my friend Emily and she's going to be going through her five step method to create healthy habits. And before we get started, I just want to tell you guys about some of my favorite products that I'm using personally to support my health. One of my supplements that I take every day is my daily omega-3 supplement. And this is because I actually tested my levels at home and they were so, so, so low. And really 97% of people worldwide are low in omega-3. And this affects us at a cellular level. So things like our brain, our mood, the way we think, dry eyes, dry skin, our vessels, our gut, I'll go back to making sure that we're having enough omega-3s. And I love this supplement because one, you can buy a kit where you can test your levels so that you know. You test it, you supplement, and you retest again to make sure that your body is absorbing it. And the supplement I use has had added polyphenols so that we get better absorption and no fishy burps, fishy taste, which comes from oxidation. So check out the link down below on how to get started with that. The other supplement I'm loving is my Organifi. I like to have the Organifi green in the morning, and this gives me a natural dose of energy. It has adaptogen herbs in it. My favorite one is ashwagandha, and this helps our body to adapt to stress. So we're getting lots of micronutrients and helping with our stress. I also love the Organifi gold. Right now they have pumpkin pie spice. I like to have it with some almond milk or coconut milk, and it's really a yummy drink. It also has lemon bulb in it, which is a great calming, relaxing herb and also turmeric. So if you guys want to check it out, there's a link down below and use the code healthy 20 to save 20% off today. Hi friends, and welcome to the healthy beyond 40 show. I'm Michelle mama for a military wife. I have my doctorate in physical therapy, and I'm an online personal trainer, health coach, and yoga teacher. Do you wish that you had more energy and could get into shape? Do you feel like you're struggling to lose weight? Maybe you've tried a diet before, but it just wasn't sustainable, and now you don't know how to get started. We're gonna look at health holistically here, and most importantly, keep things simple and quick. If you're ready to develop healthier habits, exercise consistently, and lose weight sustainably without long workouts or following strict diets, then you're in the right place. In this podcast, I bring together my expertise with real life strategies. No magic pill here, so lace up those shoes and get moving. I'm so excited to have a guest on the show. She's going to talk all about habits today. And if you guys know me, I love habits because I think they're really the foundation of being able to sustain something. So Emily, feel free to introduce yourself. Well, Michelle, thanks for having me on. Hello, everyone. My name is Emily Nichols. I'm the host of Habit Hack Your Health, where I help in particular busy working millennial moms habit hack their health. But we do this from a perspective of what I like to call my atomic habits for women philosophy, where we're thinking about creative habit hacks to make health actually work in your life without it feeling overwhelming, without it taking a lot of time or guilt and really thinking about training for life and no longer prescribing to diet culture mentality. I love that. And I think that is when we can start to shift our mind from trying to just make a bunch of changes at once and really narrowing in and learning how to use habits for us so that we can actually make change. And it feels so much better when you do that. Yeah. I mean, you get those quick wins and you feel confident in yourself and then the momentum just goes from there. Yeah. So tell us about your five step for habit change. Yeah. Yeah. So when we want to start a new habit, you kind of think of it like this. You have to open a new tab, right? And as busy working moms, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of tabs open in my head (laughs) and on my laptop too. I feel like looking at my laptop, I'm like, wow, this is what my brain (laughs) must look like as well. You know, there's tabs open for work, for things I need to do for my kids, a growth, like an online grocery list always going at the same time. There's a lot of tabs open in our heads. So when you start a new habit, when it comes to your health, sometimes we don't even take that step because it feels really overwhelming to even open up another tab. 
or at the opposite end of that, Michelle, we open up a tab for movement. We open up a tab for food. We open up a tab for oh, mindset work. And then we're too overwhelmed and we do none of it. So we have to think about this and take a step back and work smarter instead of overwhelming ourselves. So I have a five-step habit change method. Kind of think of this as like habit strategy 101 when it comes to creating healthy habits and making them stick. And what I love about this system is I like to personally go through it myself every quarter. It's become a habit in itself now where I'm able to pivot then my healthy habits for whatever season of life I'm going into. Because as you know, there's different seasons where what's working now might not work in the next season. So the first step is to really think about what is your habit identity? Who do you want to be and how will your healthy habits support that? So if for you, it's like, I want to be a healthy mom with, you know, patience, be present with my kids and have energy. That's my habit identity. And then the next step, step number two is to really identify, well, what healthy habit will help support that identity? And I like to focus on just your fundamental needs. Okay. And when I say fundamental needs, I only focus on three areas and that's your mindset, movement habits, or your food freedom. And I want you to pick just one habit out of one of those areas instead of like, I'm going to do all of them at once because that's when we get that analysis paralysis or we're too overwhelmed. So, you know, for, you know, that example I just gave, I'm like, I want to have energy, be patient and present with my kids. Okay. Well, that means I really need to fuel my body. I want to eat healthy foods to help me do that without restriction, enjoy foods that fuel my soul as well. So I'm going to pick a food freedom habit. So maybe that's like a little mini meal prep. Like I'm a big fan of, you know, just making a little extra to have for the next day. Okay. Well, that's what, that's, what's going to help me instead of being hangry all the time and not fueling myself. Okay. So I'm going to do some more mini meal prep. So the third step is time. (laughs) Where am I going to find the time to do this? And with using that meal prep example, I think sometimes we look online and we see people doing like hashtag meal prep Sunday and it's like a three hour process and the clean, the cleanup is the worst part about meal prep in my opinion. That sounds great, but is that sustainable for you every week? I know I've done big meal prep Sundays and I feel so accomplished and I'm so excited about it throughout the week. But then, you know, a Sunday comes up where, you know, my kids are a little extra busy or it's beautiful outside and we're doing outside things all day. And it's like, ah, now I'm behind. So you need to step back and see where all your time is going. I would recommend doing something called a time inventory or a habit inventory and just sit down and over a few days, you know, three to five days, just write down everything you do in a day. Okay. And don't let this be overwhelming. It can be super simple where you're like, okay, for an hour, I answered emails. And I also want you to think about writing down how you felt during that time as well, or just reflect on it because sometimes more than likely, you're going to find some time wasters in your day, probably like scrolling social media or feeling distracted by, you know, if you work from home, just seeing the dishes piled up in your sink or the basket of laundry that you have to fold. So take a look at that and you'll be able to see where some of those time gaps are and some time wasters that you can get rid of. Okay, step four, it's my favorite step. And that is some juicy habit strategy. And that, and that is to make a habit loop. So a habit loop, we already have them throughout our day. A habit loop is a cue, a routine, and a reward. And that creates a habit loop. So, you know, like the order you get ready in the morning, you already have a habit loop going that triggers you to brush your teeth, right? And you do the... you. You have some type of cue to brush your teeth. The routine is brushing your teeth and the reward as well. I have good dental hygiene, right? Super simple. That's a habit we all do. Well, so using that meal prep example, so I'm like, okay, well, let's create a habit loop around this. I just can't like think about it. I need to like have a system around that. So for me, I'm like, okay, the cue is anytime I make a meal, the routine is I will pop extra protein in the oven. The reward is on the other side. Wow, I have extra protein for the next day to create a meal. And I, this is probably the hardest part, Michelle, is the reward part because we're not ones to be like, yay me. But anytime I meal prep something, I literally say like, oh my gosh, thank you me from the past because you totally look today instead of feeling like hangry or turning to unhealthy food choices. 
And then the final step, step five, is to track, then stack. Okay, so if you're wanting to make this a habit, sometimes we need some extra tools in place. So maybe you get a habit tracker. We have a digital one inside of our shop or just a printable one, or you could just do a piece of paper. I love a piece of paper one because you can hang it on your fridge and you have accountability with your kids and your partner seeing you're doing that as well. And just check it off because that is very satisfying. That's rewarding to check it off, but it also shows you data over time. Give that like 21 days when it's feeling like you're moving and grooving. The next 21 days, it's like, okay, well, what else can support my habit identity? Now we're going to add on movement. So see, we're slowly, as you mentioned, one by one stacking in new habits. I have to think about the system in itself becomes a habit and you pivot as you go into new seasons of your life. That way you just don't throw your health out the window. There's always something small you can do to take care of yourself and pivot as seasons of your life change. Yeah, I love that. So we got first is our habit identity. And I typically like, I call it people's bigger why. Because I think sometimes, especially when people are thinking about weight loss, it's like, I want to lose X amount of pounds. I want to fit into what? But we got to go a little deeper. And I think when you start going a little deeper and getting that deeper why or that identity that you're talking about, I think that's so powerful because that's what really starts to motivate us. Because really, if we lose 10, 20 pounds, like a lot of times it doesn't really matter. Like, We might need to do it for our health, but it doesn't really change our motivation necessarily. Well, you got to think, right? As moms, we are very nurturing people. And a lot of times, you know, I want you want to be healthy for yourself. Absolutely. Putting yourself first. But also it's very motivating. I want to be patient and present for my loved ones, for, you know, my spouse. So that's very motivating and more likely you'll have the motivation to do it. Yeah. And then we had number two was thinking about what will support you. And I loved how you break this into the three pieces. This is sort of the same thing I do. It's sort of that mind mindset. I would like to add emotions in there and thoughts. We have that movement piece. And I love how you said, I usually say nutrition, but food freedom, because we don't want to have that negative relationship with food. We don't want to have that negative relationship with exercise where we feel like we ate this. Now we have to exercise or do that. So I love having food freedom in there. I also love how you broke it down as we're going to start in one area, then add on because I see so many people that they try to make so many changes at once. And that's how they end up in that yo-yo cycle and not really getting successful and being able to sustain something because we get so excited at first, but that's going to die away. So if we can actually start smaller. We tend to have more success. Totally. Yeah. Number three was time. I don't know about you, but this is like people's biggest complaint that they don't have time. I was just talking to a new client this week and she's like, Michelle, like you have four kids, don't you? Like, she's like, how do you do everything? And so I gave her a little, a walkthrough of my day, but you know, she's talking, it was like, there's a lot of things I don't do. And I have rules where I don't get on my phone till like eight in the morning, eight at night, it's off. And I don't do much social media on my phone, like creating these rules so that you actually have more time for those things that are important for you. Yeah. I feel like we're so overscheduled and overstimulated and we just have this loop running through our head that I don't have time. I don't have time. But I don't think sometimes we step back to realize, well, when I take care of my health, I will, I'll have more time because I'll have more energy to be able to do the things I need to do. Yeah. And I know you have mentioned social media. What are some other like time wasters that you feel people do or maybe things they let go of so that they do have more time to meal prep or cook a meal or get their exercise in. Yeah, I mean, I think the phone is such a distraction. I mean, if you're able to put it on airplane mode, because I know for me, like, you know, I'll be writing a podcast episode and then I'll have like a group text come through from my girlfriends and it's like ding, 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 all those distractions or emails coming through. And I'll, you know, maybe do like a routine block or a time block where I'm like, I am just focused on emails right now. I am just focused on podcasting. Because I think a lot of times as as women, we try to multitask and that's where like the overstimulation comes into play. So I think if you are able to time block or routine block one set way, remove the distractions, whether it would be your phone, 
whether it would actually be like, you know, your kids, like if it's summertime and they're home a lot or a break in the season, like letting them know, like, hey, from this time to this time, I need to ensure you're doing this. I need to ensure I'm getting this done. It's just setting boundaries with them around that. But I feel like it's usually the phone is the biggest thing. There's so many different distractions, but also your kids as well. Yes. The kids can get in the way or different people yeah. call or things pop up. But yeah, I agree with the phone. And sometimes it's a lot easier to see in someone else too. Like I'll be like with my husband, like, what are you doing on your phone? Like we're supposed to be sitting here talking, but a lot of times we do that same thing too. And we just don't see it in ourselves. So I love yeah. the idea of taking that time inventory. Well, and doing the inventory, a lot of times that will give you the facts. And sometimes it's very eye opening. And if you like track it and you're like, wow, I spent two hours on my phone today. What was I doing? And it's like, ah, and then you're like, okay, there's no excuse. I got to get you know, put some limitations or rules, like you said, oh, that's definitely a really helpful tip. Yeah. And I have an iPhone. So I know like at the end of the week, it will like tell you your weekly report. And then you can look in and see what apps you were spending time on, how you were spending time. And sometimes that's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's an icky feeling, right? I have a setting on Instagram and Facebook and it pops up when I've been on either app for an hour throughout the day. And it says, you've reached your time limit. Do you want to continue? And I'm always like, Oh, that makes me very mindful. Like, okay, I need to move on. Stop watching all the funny dog videos on there's what I get sucked into. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. And number four was that habit loop. So we have a cue, we have a routine, and then also setting up some rewards, some acknowledgement. And like you said, we don't tend to celebrate things because they don't seem like that big of a deal. Like, oh, I went for a walk this morning. Like, I should be doing that anyways. And so then we don't feel like it's something worthy of like feeling proud of ourselves. So I think shifting that a little bit can be helpful. And then tip number five was track then stack. So and really, I know you said 21 days. Sometimes I feel like it takes people a little longer. So if you need to extend that before you add another habit on, then do that. Yeah. I mean, they say like, okay, it could take 21 days to form a habit. So if within 20 days, you're like, okay, I feel really good about this, then sure, stack another one on. But you know, it could probably take up to 90 days for it to feel like a lifestyle, right? Where you don't have to think about it anymore. Like a lot of folks ask, ask me, how long should I track? And I'm like, until you don't have to anymore, until you find yourself not tracking because you're just automatically doing it. Like ding, ding, ding. It's a habit. You don't need to track it anymore. Yeah, it's become part of a routine. And I feel like when I talk to people and we start setting up, usually we do a couple habits when they're working with me and they're like, this is all you want me to do. Like, yes, that's all I want you to do. And then it's interesting because even as they start, it will be a little bumpy because life happens, something comes up, they couldn't quite do something. And really taking a slower approach is what makes them more successful when we look at the year as a whole, because they, I mean, we've all done it before where we get so excited, we start something and then it fizzles out because we didn't start slow and allow that time to just happen. Yeah. You have to make it so tiny and just so, so simple. And that just triggers in your brain. Like, look at me, I'm doing this versus, you know, making it super big and then having all those internal and external distractions that happen. And then you just feel frustrated because it's not attainable and it's not sustainable. Yeah. And I think another thing as you're going through this process is that things aren't always smooth. No. So that's where getting support, having encouragement, having people around you to talk to when you're struggling, like maybe you wanted to meal prep a certain way and it's just not working. And what happens is most people give up. But instead, if we can tweak it, if we can talk it out with someone, if we can have support and accountability, that's where we can start to not give up on ourselves and not give up on the habit because uh, things are a little bit of trial and error sometimes. Yeah. Or, you know, I, that's why I love tracking because that sometimes gives you a little bit more data. You're, you feel frustrated. You're like, oh, I'm trying to work out five days a week and it's just not happening. You know, I keep having all these things come up. But if you look at your tracker and you're like, oh, well, I've worked out three days a week this past month consistently each week. It's like, oh, well, maybe that's that's just my sweet spot. And that's that's what's going to work for me. And you can kind of tweak it for like, well, this just works for the season of life I'm in right now. And 
it is what it is, right? So sometimes we need to look at the facts versus just our feelings. Yeah, I love that. And I think sometimes when we do that, we can actually see, okay, maybe we were a little more successful than we thought. It wasn't like we wanted it, but actually I'm doing something and staying consistent with it, even though it wasn't quite my goal. Yeah. And that's so empowering. That's so empowering. Yeah. Well, Emily, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom here today. For those listeners, I'm going to put this in the description. I'll put those five steps there so you can visually see it. And Emily, tell us where we can find you. Yeah. Well, thanks again for having me on, Michelle. You can listen to Habit Hack Your Health on any of your favorite podcasting apps. And you can connect with me on Instagram at Emily Nichols too, too. I share a little behind the scenes stories, but I'm all, I'm only on Instagram for an hour a day. So it's quick. I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Then I'm off. So if you're looking to get a message back from me, it'll probably be the next day. I'm very intentional with that. Cause like I said, those funny dog videos just suck me in. And if you want to learn a little bit more about the method, I just mentioned, it's part of my free masterclass called the healthy habit reset. I'll make sure to get a link to Michelle to put in the show notes as well, but you can dig a little bit deeper into each step of the process. And we have a worksheet with it as well for you to start tracking that one habit over the next 21 days and feel super successful. Perfect. That will all be in the description. Listeners, I hope that you guys have a great day and keep moving. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode today and took something away. I encourage you to check out my Facebook group, Healthy Beyond 40. There's going to be a link down below. And this is just a really great supportive community. A lot of us are not surrounded enough by like-minded, healthy people. So this is your place. You can post in the group. You can ask questions. You can hold yourself accountable. So check out the link down below and head to the Healthy Beyond 40 Facebook group.